so the power rule, which is our first rule, was fairly straightforward. Now we're going to get into the product rule where things get a little complicated. So you know how when we added and subtracted functions, we could just take the derivative of each thing separately. So when you got something with a product, the initial guess is why can't I just get the derivative of each one separately and multiply it? And that's what Leibniz guessed as well. He said, well, why don't I just say the derivative for this is 3x squared plus 3, because that would be the derivative of x cubed and the derivative of 3x, and multiply that by 2x minus 5, because that would be the derivative of the second one. So that was his initial guess, and what, else, what did he find out about this? It was wrong. Now, it's quite easy to see why it's wrong, because if you would take something simple, if you would take something simple like x times x to the 4, and I'll write that out here, x times x to the 4. If I would do the derivative of each one separately, well, the derivative of x is just 1, and the derivative of x to the 4 is 4x cubed, and that would equal 4x cubed, but we know that that's the same as x to the 5, and we already know that the derivative of x to the 5 is 5x to the 4. So we can't just do the derivative of each thing separately. So after that didn't work, he said, well, maybe I'll try something crazy like this. If I have a multiplication of two things, and I'm going to color code things here so that you can see them a little bit easier. So if we have one function, that's in yellow there, multiplied by another function, which is in green, then the derivative looks like this. You keep one of them the same. So I'm going to keep the yellow one the same and then multiply by the derivative of the other one. And then I'm going to keep the second one the same and multiply that by the derivative of the first one. So when we have two functions multiplied together, we're going to see that the derivative is keep one the same, multiply by the derivative of the second one, then keep the second one the same and multiply by the derivative of the first one. So we can have this in this kind of notation, or we could have this in a notation where there's my one function u, my second function v. Same thing, I keep u the same, and then dv dx, that's just notation for derivative of the second one. And then I keep my second function the same. And du dx is just notation for the derivative of the first one. OK, this is general stuff. Let's look at what this really means with an example. So we say, let's find y primed if we have x squared times by 2x minus 1. Again, for color coding purposes, here's my first function, x squared, and it's getting multiplied by this, so that'll be my second function. So I can think of this one as u and this one as v. One function multiplied by another function. The derivative for this will look like this. Keep the first one the same, so I keep it x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the second one. Well, what's the derivative of the green one? just 2. Then I keep the second one the same, and then multiply that by the derivative of the first one. What's the derivative of the yellow one? 2x. Again, I'll color code the things that stayed the same. So I kept the first one the same, multiplied by the derivative of the second one. Then I kept the second one the same, and multiplied by the derivative of the first one. If I multiplied this out and simplified it, because in your answer key, when you go to do work on these, they'll have the simplified version. So after you've got this, this will be 2x squared plus, if I distribute that, 4x squared minus 2x, 6x squared minus 2x. 
Now, can you see a way that you could figure this out if you didn't know the product rule? No, this is the only way to do it. If we would have distributed originally, you could distribute this x squared through, right? What would that create? I'll do it in this box in black. y equals 2x cubed minus, wow, that's pretty x, x squared. Nice, nice recovery. And then if I want to do the derivative of that, that's an easy one because that's just adding and subtracting. And adding and subtracting ones, you can just do each derivative separately. So what's the derivative of 2x cubed? 6x squared. What's the derivative of minus x squared? Minus 2x. And in hindsight, doesn't the black, in this case, look like it's a lot faster? Especially if you want the simplified version. So multiplying this one out would have been a quicker way rather than using the complicated product rule. But that's part of the reason I wanted to show you this one, to say, if you want to use the product rule, it's going to work. It's always going to work. However, sometimes if you could make it into a sum and difference where it's just the power rule that you're using, that may be easier. But I wanted to show you that either way that you do this, you're going to get the same answer. Now, some of our examples might actually be a little bit time consuming to multiply them out. This one, if we multiplied it out, it wouldn't be too bad, but it wouldn't necessarily be super quick. So what does it look like to do the product rule? Again, in order to use the product rule, you need to see two functions multiplied together. So here, in yellow, I have one function. Here's multiplication in between. And here is my second function. So what does the product rule say? Product rule says, let's keep the first one the same, and then multiply by the derivative of the second one. The derivative of the green one is just going to be 2. Plus, now we'll keep the second one the same and multiply by the derivative of the first one, while the derivative of the first one will be 12x cubed minus 7. Again, just so you can start to see the idea, we always keep one the same, multiply by the derivative of the other one, then you keep the other one the same, and multiply by the derivative of the first one. Can you see that the order doesn't even matter because you're adding? So if you decided, oh, which one do I keep the same first, it doesn't matter. You could decide to keep the green one the same first and multiply by the derivative of the yellow one or vice versa. You're going to get the same answer. Now again, your textbook might have this multiplied out and simplified. Often on a test or on a quiz, you do not need to simplify. This would be enough for your final answer. Now take a step back just for a second and imagine putting that function into your definition of the derivative and adding those x plus h's wherever there's an x and having to expand everything and combine all the like terms and eventually factor out an h to try and solve it and how long that would take. So what we're learning right now are shortcuts that are saving us a huge amount of time for figuring out our derivatives. And what is a derivative again? Because sometimes we get into these and we start doing these and we forget. What is a derivative again? Well, this equation tells us all the slopes of all the lines on that equation. So this is some crazy x to the 5 graph. What does an x to the 5 graph look like? Well, it might have look something like that. And every single tangent at every single point on here, if we collected all of those slopes, 
we would get this equation. And we could graph that equation to see what all those slopes were. But again, remember that the derivative gives you an, equa gives you an equation to find a slope at any point on that original graph. 